Welcome traders to this week's live market analysis session with uh, me, Patrick Munley. I'm just going to, before we get going here, want to quickly check uh, the audio. If you can hear me and you can see my screen, if you type a Y in the chat box, and I'll know we are good to go. Thanks very much. Okay, so um, before we jump into today's content, uh, as always, I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, uh, specifically for today's presentation, um, the views expressed by me or the opinion, market opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, for those that are here for the first time, brief introduction to me. Um, as I say, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. And after a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling, the S&P. 500 and after some early beginners luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, that beginners luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what were ultimately to prove uh, losing positions. I gave back all my gains and uh, ended up taking a significant six figure hit on my personal capital. To say this was a gut wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. And I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. So working with my mentor for a period of uh, 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality. I extensively back and forward tested um, and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it all. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably uh, the most important watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, actually, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand and accept the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional uh, investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades. Because I know if I focus on excellence in my execution, that my trading edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentations on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert for Tickmill. Uh, through their blog, I provide a daily market outlook um, which you can get uh, delivered to your inbox by registering your email address on the blog site. I also uh, provide uh, technical analysis, short technical analysis videos of trade setups that I'm, I'm watching in the market. And those are delivered via the Tickmill YouTube channel and various social media outlets. Um, I guess my other passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and more importantly, funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates 
in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested in learning more about what we do at FX Career Swap, you can uh, call the guys on the desk in London or you can drop them an email and they'll happily provide you with more information. So that gives you a flavor of, uh, of where I'm coming from. Now I wanna jump in to talk about the markets and where I see potential opportunities. Before we look at the actual charts, I just wanted to um, highlight Morgan Stanley issued a, a research note today talking about seasonality as we head into this uh, new month and new quarter. And they highlight uh, the, the April period as being a particularly strong period for equity markets. Now, you may be familiar with the, uh, the old adage, uh, buy, uh, selling may and go away. Um, well, you can see here that the April performance is, uh, is really very strong for uh, global equ equity markets. This is going back over um, a 30 year period, 30 year look back. But specifically for, for me as, as uh, focusing in terms of uh, Forex opportunities, uh, we can see here that the dollar index has a tendency to underperform during, uh, during this period. And we see that the uh, Canadian uh, CADS does well, the Aussie does pretty well, Sterling does pretty well, Euro does okay, Japanese yen doesn't do great, but the, the notable uh, thing that I, we want to pay attention to is this idea that we could see some, uh, some weakness or some softness, certainly, in terms of the dollar index. And down here, you can see uh, on the left, this is a, a seasonal patterns chart that I share with the guys on uh, the FX Career Swap trading floor. And um, what we can see here, these are a, a bunch of metrics, but the, the, one, the one I want to uh, pay attention to is the idea that we see here um, on a, a, an average basis that the dollar has a tendency to put in a high in and around the beginning of April. Uh, this, uh, these seasonal patterns refer specifically to post-election years, and which is what we're in at the moment. So we can see even um, outside of election years that this, this tendency for the dollar to, uh, to put in a, a near-term top in terms of uh, April is uh, is underpinned by this research note here from um, from Morgan Stanley. So that's just something to bear in mind. As as I say to the guys on the trading team, um, we, you don't want to you don't want to just blindly trade a seasonal pattern. But what you want to think about in terms of your your strategy, however you approach the markets, um, if you get a signal here uh, in your if your strategy to uh, that that suggests an opportunity maybe to, to be long the Aussie dollar or uh, short the um, loonie, uh, then you can try and ride those trades for a bit, a bit more return based on the idea that um, you, you can, if you've got a, a strategic signal, then that strategic signal could potentially um, benefit from, from the additional uh, seasonality factors that may uh, may drive price action. So that's just something to have in the back of your mind anyway, as uh, as you approach the, the beginning of April here. So let's jump into the charts and see what we have got. Um, starting with the S&P 500, we, uh, we didn't quite test the support area that I was looking for uh, in terms of that 3816. Um, we know now heading into April that this is uh, period of uh, potential strength for these equity indexes. So what I'm looking for is a drive higher here to ultimately test uh, the 4088 level. Uh, that's the ascending trend line resistance here. I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns there. I think we can see another corrective leg, um, probably to get us down into these prior highs at the 3970 level. But from there, certainly watch for bullish reversal patterns uh, to to take us higher. I'm, I'm looking for us to basically test up into the 4200 level um, in the, the S&P now. Uh, really, we'd have to close, we'd have to take out these 3853 uh, lows to, to think about uh, downside uh, patterns at this stage. So for, for the near term, um, want to watch for a bit of exhaustion up here at the 4090 area and, uh, and a pullback uh, should be looking to, to get long uh, and position for a move up into the, the 4200 zone is what I'm uh, focusing on in terms of these S&P uh, 500. The uh, 
DAX has also traded higher here. I'm looking for the DAX ultimately now to test the um, ascending trend line resistance. Yearly R1 pivot comes in at 15,716, certainly looking for 15,650. And any um, interim weakness uh, back into the new monthly pivot at 14,638 there. Uh, watch for bullish reversal patterns. I think that's an opportunity to trade the DAX on the long side. Um, is the uh, is the pattern I'm watching there? The Nikkei two two five, uh, looking for that to trade higher. We've been in a, a bit of a corrective uh, phase here. We didn't quite test the equality objective at the twenty eight thousand seventy eight level. Now, given the seasonal patterns, um, we we may just take off to the upside here. If we didn't do that, if we uh, if we continued to uh, trade in a bit more of a, a complex corrective fashion. Any move like this, I think, uh, offers a great opportunity in terms of the, the Nikkei, any test into this zone versus this swing high here at 30,515 is, uh, is the area to watch and watch for bullish reversal patterns on the long side. And here we've got the VIX, the volatility measure. You can see we're making new lows there. And as that volatility uh, grinds to the downside, then that's what will be supportive of these equity markets trading higher. Um, in terms of the VIX, we've got a gap back here at 17, 17.3. Uh, Watch that area, you may see a bit of uh, support coming for, for the VIX. But at the moment, we've traded through this uh, support zone that we were watching at the, the just the, the 19 level. And we're trading through there now at the moment. And that's, that's providing some additional support to equity markets. Uh, equal weighted dollar index. This is uh, dollar index versus... Uh, the euro, Aussie, yen, and sterling in equal measure. Um, so obviously, finding uh, still remains bid here. My sense that, that most of the, the the support that we're seeing for this uh, this move is coming from the yen. We'll look at the yen in a minute and uh, the ten year yields, uh, and that's that's what's that's what's driving. Um, driving this equal weighted index. I'd be looking for us to get a test now of this 120 level, which is the equality objective versus this ABC scenario. Um, we have the yearly pivot just above at 120.96 and the 38.2% retracement of the entire decline there, which will be a, uh, a zone I'll be paying attention to, watching price action as we trade in and around that level. Um, this is the one that is more broadly watched, obviously, the uh, dollar index versus uh, six a basket of six other currencies. It's setting up, I think, now, um, as, as we just talked about in terms of the seasonal patterns, I think we could see some weakness here initially, but I think we'll find support at the monthly pivots and these prior highs at 92.40. And what I'd be looking for then will be a blow-off move to take us up into the yearly pivot at 94.08. And, uh, and the equality objective versus the swing low here at 91.28. So if, um, if, we hold in the, if we hold the 92.40, I'm looking for 94. Now, given the seasonal factors, it may be that we don't hold uh, the pivot here. And if we don't, then um, we could be looking at a deeper corrective move develop. So it's really gonna be pivotal how we trade at the 92.40. And that's, that's what I'll be keeping my eye on as we head into, um, Next week, obviously, we're um, very low liquidity tomorrow being Good Friday. Uh, most of the major markets are shut, uh, certainly here in Europe. Um, the foreign exchange market obviously remains open, but it's uh, it's going to be very low participation. So it's really going to be next week when uh, when I think we'll see the, the these moves kick in. But want to uh, really pay close attention to how we trade here. If uh, if we don't find support here, then uh, we should be back into the 9128 area uh, as the next area of support. So it's, uh, that's going to be pivotal uh, as the next phase of price action for the dollar index. So 10 year yields continue to, to grind it out to the upside here, but seeing some resistance at this 175 level, we've got a bunch of um, momentum divergence. And um, for those who work with me, will know that that's, I pay attention to that. And certainly when we get into these double tops or triple top scenario, if we've got that divergence, then I think that portends some weakness. So we could see a uh, pullback here to test channel supports, which comes in around 158, 1.58%, sorry, in, uh, in the 10 year yields. But I still think ultimately, whilst we hold that trend line support, 
uh, we can extend and certainly see a 2% test uh, in the coming weeks. Gold, <coughs> uh, I was watching for a, uh, a test of this 1653 level. We didn't get it. Um, and what we potentially got here is a double bottom coinciding with yields, double top. Um, these, the, these instruments tend to trend, uh, sorry, trade inversely. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got a double bottom here. We've got a, a bullish reversal candle yesterday. This candle um, on normal charting would, would show a green candle, um, but I have a, some specific settings here to, uh, to work with short term trends. And so it didn't meet the criteria to, to flip the, uh, this candle bullish versus my strategy. But I know that today we are looking, uh, we're looking to get a, a bullish close. And again, paying attention to this, uh, this divergence here on the psych indicator, and we've got the same divergent pattern um, playing out in with the RSI stochastic here. So I like uh, I like the potential here for a bit of strength in gold. And if we can get if we can get a close through the monthly pivot here, then uh, certainly we can start to think about a test of 1755. And then I think we can move on uh, to test the yearly pivot from below at 1800. And that feeds into this uh, this idea, obviously, that we could see some some dollar uh, dollar weakness. Uh, silver. Not, uh, not strong as gold at this stage. Um, what I would be looking for uh, is a pullback here. Whilst we trade below the monthly pivot here, I'm looking, so that's 20, that $25 level. I want to, I'd like to see another test of the support zone here um, down to $22.60 to $22. Um, and if we buy a step back in here, then uh, that could be interesting for another test of this range resistance up towards $30. So keeping an eye on this support zone um, at the yearly pivot down to $22 uh, for silver. Crude oil, um, as we hold 62.29 as resistance, then we have an equality objective at 51.77. And that equality objective uh, falls in line with the trend line, a third test of the, of the trend line, from the last, uh, from last March lows, post-pandemic lows. And this will be an area I'll be paying very close attention to in terms of crude. I think this will be a, a potentially a very significant buying opportunity. I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns here because then I think that sets up a move to, um, to take, well, certainly to take out these prior highs if, we, if that's going to be what uh, Elliott Wave uh, technicians refer to as a wave four low. And then we can start to think about channel resistance here, maybe up towards $75 in crude. So this I see as a potentially very interesting opportunity and one I'm gonna be tracking closely. Copper has, uh, just continues to consolidate really. Um, a lot of, uh, I think there's, there's a potential for, uh, for a lot of interest to develop in copper. Uh, certainly if Biden's gonna get these infrastructure uh, deals, uh, this infrastructure stimulus plan through. Um, a lot of their projects are going to require copper. Uh, we know that China has obviously, uh, it has been stockpiling copper. So I think these issues are, are going to potentially drive, this will be the fundamental driver between higher prices in copper. So you can see copper continue to grind out here. Um, if we if we can't if we don't get a move through uh, 418 for, uh, 418 then look for 367 that's the equality objective and again coincides with that trend channel the third test I always you know I, I stress the point of paying attention to the third test of, of trend lines um, because uh, I think that again similar to that crude oil buying opportunity um, I think this is one that uh, that could be very interesting. And, um, and I'm paying close attention to any move into that area. Or equally, a break through the 418 level uh, could also suggest that we've, uh, we've completed our correction here and, uh, and we're heading higher in than me. Bitcoin uh, continues to grind it out to the upside whilst we, uh, whilst we hold support here at the $50,000 level. I think we can get a test up into the 64,000 area and then I'll be watching because we uh, have got a bunch of momentum divergence, triple divergence by then, I guess. Um, and I think that could be the area for a pullback to test this primary trend line here, back just below $50,000. And uh, we can have a bit of a wash, positioning wash out before, uh, before we look to take it uh, higher again in terms of the, uh, in terms of Bitcoin. 
dollar yuan. Got a target here now of 664. That's versus the swing low here at 647. I think then we can see a, a pullback to probably test this, uh, this new trend line here uh, as support. So maybe we get something like this back into those prior highs. And then I think that's going to be uh, an opportunity for us to, uh, to trade higher and get a test of the yearly pivot here in terms of the dollar yuan. The dollar yen been uh, been grinding it out to the upside, and um, what I'm looking for now is ultimately uh, if we if if you think in terms of dollar dollar uh, sorry in terms of the ten year yield, um, or if you, you if you don't have access to you know the bond market in terms of uh, trading, you can uh, use the dollar yen as a proxy. So if if I think that um, the the ten year yields are going to two percent. Um, we, we could have, a, you know, an interim correction here, but ultimately, if I think they're going two uh, percent, maybe a bit higher, um, then one way of playing that uh, through the foreign exchange market is with the dollar yen. So, if we get a correction here in terms of dollar yen, which I think we could see now, uh, maybe back to test this one hundred nine thirty support, then I'd want to pay, pay very close attention to how we trade there because. If we get bullish reversal patterns there, I think there's a setup to take us into the 113. Now, where do I get the 113 from? Well, 113 is actually an equality objective versus that swing there, as measured from that swing low, which would take us up into 113. So um, that's why I'm paying attention. I really want to pay attention to uh, to how we trade in around that 109.40 area. That's also the new um, monthly pivot for um, for April. Is that could be the uh, uh, an opportunity to uh, to join the trend here and play for uh, for this one thirteen to the upside. Swissy starting to uh, take a pause here. I think the Swissy we uh, we've traded into that that top uh, that trend line resistance again. Where it doesn't look like we're going to get a close through. I I like this potentially on the short side here at least for a pullback into the. Uh, the, wet, the, the wedge support um, pattern and the new monthly pivot 9320 area is what I'd um, I, what I'd be looking for, and then we'll have to see if buyers step back in here. Then I think we've got a, a clear setup to check, to, to take the test of, a, of the 95 level, which would then complete this this wave sequence. Um, I get the 95 target by measuring wave one, which is here, and if this is what the wave four low. The more often than not, as a as an, an upside objective, that equal measure, that equal equality objective versus uh, wave one, as measured from wave four, is is oftentimes where we see the uh, these patterns terminate. So that's why I'm watching that area to the upside. But uh, like I say, I think we can see a pullback here. Dollar CAD. Really, uh, I think we, we're, we're headed to 121 with dollar, dollar CAD. We could, uh, we could actually be the, this. This could be the the, the top for now, uh, an interim high, and uh, we could do something like this. But equally, if we hold uh, into these prior lows here, then I think we could see a bit more range action. Uh, maybe get up to 127 before we start the next leg to the downside. But certainly, I remain um, bearish to dollar CAD, and I'm looking for uh, for a 121 test. To the downside, Sing Dollar. This is one I talked about. Uh, I'm posting as a uh, as one of my chart hits. Um, just hasn't got any traction to the upside, um, even with the dollar index pushing higher. We just uh, it's pretty lackluster price action. So um, we'll have to see. But so, again, versus this 133.82 level, the equality objective is 137.50, but we're just not seeing much. Uh, much interest at this point. Euro has, uh, has we got down to the yearly pivot as discussed last week. Now really, as we hold um, the monthly, the new monthly pivot and uh, at 118.40, I think more likely than not, we, we take a look at, uh, at 116 support uh, to complete the the corrective move here, if that is going to be, um, if it is going to prove to be the corrective low, and then I think we can try and base. Um, but again, with these seasonal patterns, you can see we're trying to put in a bullish reversal here now in, in the euro. We've got some uh, divergence, so I think we can we can certainly set up a correction here higher 
to that uh, that one eighteen forty uh, into next week. Euro yen uh, potential for a head and shoulders type scenario here in the euro yen, but I remember bullish the euro yen certainly versus the uh, the one twenty eight here, and I'm actually looking for a one thirty two ultimately in euro yen. Euro Swiss. Again, pretty lackluster price action, given, given the setup we had here. Um, I thought we'd see uh, something a bit more explosive to the upside, but we're trying to, go, trying to grind it out here. The next area of interest is going to be 111.89. I think that, uh, that could be an opportunity on the short side to see, uh, as we would then have the technical requirements for completing this impulse move. And I think then we could pull back to retest this uh, 109.14 as support. Euro sterling continues to uh, to remain under pressure, driven predominantly, I think, by the uh, the UK vaccine performance versus Europe's uh, pretty shambolic situation that uh, that we're currently in here. Um, versus the wave four high here, we have an equality objective uh, for the fifth wave low, the interim low, um, eighty four forty five. I then think we can see a correction back into the wave four high here at uh, 87.27. So I'm gonna be paying attention to how we trade at that 84.45. Euro Aussie, uh, very choppy in the range. Um, the areas of interest for me are this 56.92, uh, 57.13, we've got some equality objectives. And then we could, could, this wave four then could be complete. And then that sets up a wave five to the downside at 149.49. Uh, 49, but really want to stay out of it in the middle here. Uh, just get uh, just get chopped around. Sterling Aussie, um, watching now for a test of 83, 183. I think that's an, going to be an opportunity to to fade the Sterling Aussie. And I think what we could be looking for then is a pullback into support, the monthly pivot retest from above at 18030 before we, uh, we try for another leg higher, but pay attention to how we trade at 183. The equality objective uh, could be a nice setup there. Sterling, seeing a little bit of strength here, but whilst we hold, uh, certainly whilst we hold below one, uh, 139 at this point, monthly pivot there, uh, 138.20, um, I'm looking for the equality objective 135.40. And I think bullish reversal patterns there will be an opportunity for uh, for an extension higher in terms of uh, in terms of cable, sterling yen potential double top here. And what have we got when we look at our momentum studies? We have got a lot of divergence, and uh, and that's something I like to pay attention to. It offers a high probability um, opportunity. So all we're waiting for now, what we're watching for is a reversal pattern here. Certainly, when we get back down into the uh, the 150 area would be the, uh, the initial target for uh, for this this opportunity. Sterling Swiss. The area of interest for me here would be the potential for us to have an interim cycle high 131.27. Again, what have we got? A bunch of divergence. So uh, that's the area of interest for me. And again, what the Logical initial target for that move will be the monthly pivot from above at 128.88. We also have this uh, trend line support coming in there as well. So that's uh, that's what I'm watching in terms of Sterling Swiss, Sterling Kiwi. Testing another test of the equality objective 198.25, finding some resistance again. Uh, watch for bearish reversal a confirmation here um, as a short opportunity for me uh, to initially target let's bring in the trend line and see what we've got so i think we could get well first of all obviously step by step we want to see how if we get back down if this rolls over then 95 uh, 195 30 the monthly pivot from above will be the first area of interest if we fail there then i think we can start to think about uh, heading back down into trend line support of 192 Aussie waiting patiently for this 7466 area as, uh, as the equality objective. And from there, I think we could uh, we can then start to think about a retest of uh, 
7840, uh, 78.43. First up, obviously, the monthly pivot at 76.63. Aussie yen, nothing there right now. Any move, any test of the 86 level, this ascending trend line resistance, accompanied by this divergence down here will certainly be of interest. Uh, we're, not, we're not really there at the moment, but that's, uh, that's the level to watch. If we do get in there and we maintain this divergence, then uh, I think there's an opportunity on the short side in, uh, in the Aussie yen. First port, port of call, obviously, will be the monthly pivot, 83.84. Aussie Kiwi, uh, this is one I'm in at the moment on the short side, um, watching for initially 108.17. Uh, through there, we can think about uh, 107.76. Through there, we can think about uh, 106.54. We've got a lot of wood to shop before we get down there. First port of call is going to be the monthly pivot and weekly range support 108.25. Kiwi came just shy of the equality objective at uh, 69.02, trade 69.35. I want to watch this here, um, this Kiwi. If we, uh, if this, if we could take out uh, these prior highs on a closing basis at, at 70.40, then I think uh, there's an opportunity on the long side. Uh, could it get through? Bit of overhead supply here likely at the monthly pivot and these prior lows so we'll have to see uh what sort of confirmation we can get here but uh but if we can get through that area then um this could be a the, the abc uh, pattern could be complete obviously i'd prefer to see the equality objective tested first um last but not least let me take a look at cad swiss Ideally, if we could get a move into uh, 75, 70 area uh, with this divergence, I like, uh, I like the CAD Swiss for a correction and uh, monthly pivot coming in 7380 is the area of interest. So those are, um, are the charts that I'm watching, the area, the levels I'm, I'm looking to, uh, to play, the, play these markets over the coming week. Are there any questions? If there's a pair you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered, you can uh, type it into the, the chat box or I can unmute your mic if you've got a microphone you want to ask a question about anything else to do uh, with markets or trading in general. Equally, if you don't have a question, uh, if you could type an N in the chat box, that's, that's useful so that uh, I know we're all on the same page and, uh, and I can wrap the session up. Okay, if there aren't any questions, I will uh, I'll close this session out. Thanks very much for your time. Hope this helps and enjoy the holiday weekend. Thanks very much, everyone.